Now it looks like it's gonna be the summer of budget-friendly GPUs. We've been specifically testing out the new RX 9060 XT. This is the Sapphire version of AMD's latest budget-friendly offering. And we're gonna compare it directly against the RTX 5060 Ti. This is the MSI Gaming OC version of the card. We're also gonna throw in the results of the 7700 XT as well as the standard 5060 to see how those cards fare up against these two and a whole bunch of synthetic and real-world benchmark results and we're basically going to look at HD, Quad HD and 4K resolution to see which one comes out on top and which one is the best for the money. Now specifically we're going to be taking a look at the Sapphire Pulse version of the Radeon RX 9060 XT. This has 16 gigabytes of video memory and it retails for around $379 on Amazon. You can also get the 8 gigabyte version for under $300. The RTX 5060 Ti, especially the 16 gigabyte version, is a lot more expensive. This MSI OC version, for example, on Amazon retails for around $588. And even the 8 gigabyte version of the 5060 Ti typically retails for around that $470 mark. Certainly a pretty significant price gap between two very similarly spec cards. Now, we're also going to be comparing the non-TI version of the 5060. We have the MSI version of the card, and these typically retail for around $350 to $380, depending upon where you can find them. And uh, we're also going to be throwing in the previous generation 7700 XT from Asus. These are at a, a much higher price point than the 9060 XT, typically around $500 to $450. Now we're going to throw up the core specifications of all four of these GPUs and you can pause the video if you want a more detailed look at them. Now the 9060 XT is uh, on paper a little bit inferior to the 7700 XT in terms of uh, floating point precision being a little bit less as well as uh, having less uh, stream processors but it does have a higher boost clock and uh, more memory which is definitely going to help and even though we have a lower capacity memory bandwidth of 128 bits which matches the Nvidia cards I don't think that's going to be a, a big uh, drawback in terms of real world gaming performance. What is going to be a big benefit is power efficiency. We're at 160 watt TDP on the 9060 XT, which is a more power efficient than the 5060 Ti and way more than the previous generation 7700 XT, which had over 240 watt TDP. As a result of the power efficiency, you only need a single 8 pin power connection versus most other uh, GPUs. You at least need two 8 pins, including the previous generation 7700 series and the 5060 Ti. Obviously, the non Ti was also very power efficient, only requiring a single pin power connection like the 9060 XT. Now our benchmarking rig is based off an Intel 14600K processor. Our build is powered by MSI, so we're using their Z Pro Z790A Max motherboard. We're also using their MAG all-in-one liquid cooling solution and their case SSD, and most of the components are powered by MSI. And we want to thank them so much for supplying the benchmarking rig. We'll have a full build breakdown in the description down below but basically the first thing we're going to take a look at is our synthetic benchmark results first let's take a look at the 3d mark benchmarking suite first starting with steel nomad on the 9060 xt we got a score of 37 74 on the 5060 ti we got 35 64 the uh, 9060 XT is faster in pretty much all regards and comes out on top, even breeding the previous generation 7700 XT, as you can see over here. Now on DirectX 12 performance using TimeSpy Extreme, the uh, Asus 7700 XT did come slightly above the 9060 XT, but not by a significant margin. Both are at 7600 points. The 5060 Ti is behind at 7300 points, and the 5060 is at 6500 points. Moving forward, let's talk about the Cyberpunk built-in benchmark. Now, we pretty much set the exact same preset for all resolutions, which was the medium ray tracing settings, and we set our upscaling mode to balanced. So that's pretty much it. We didn't touch any other setting. 
And at 4K resolution, the 5060 Ti actually came out on top. It got the highest FPS average score of 35, minimum of 32, versus the 9060 XT came in second with 33 average frames per second and a minimum of 30. And both the 7700 XT and the uh, 5060 non-Ti version of the card got this pretty much this exact same score of 31 average frames per second with a minimum of 28. You can also take a look at the Quad HD resolution over here. We're getting pretty much the same uh, metric where the 5060 comes out on top the 9060 second and uh, uh, the 5060 and uh, 7700 XT are pretty much at the same level and the results are also mirrored in HD resolution so in most cases actually uh, for ray tracing specifically the 5060 Ti is going to be slightly better based on this synthetic benchmark but what about real world gaming benchmark while within the game itself, with the medium ray tracing settings, you can take a look at our active frame rate over here, captured with MSI Afterburner on a separate PC, of course. And we're on Quad HD resolution, getting around 75-ish frames per second on average, with a minimum of 65 on the 5060 Ti, versus in the exact same situation, we're getting a 70 frames per second with a minimum of a 64. Uh, so very, very similar experience on uh, both the uh, 5060 Ti and the 9060 XT. And, and you could probably optimize both these cards to get better playable frame rates, especially Quad HD and HD resolution. But at 4K, they pretty much die uh, hovering in the uh, mid to low 30 FPS uh, for both average and minimum. But uh, generally speaking, uh, the ray tracing capabilities are going to have a little edge up on the NVIDIA cards, but not by a significant margin on Cyberpunk. Now moving forward to Red Dead Redemption 2's built-in synthetic benchmark using the high detail preset. We are getting a slightly better performance on the 5060 Ti at 4K resolution of 81 average frames per second versus 73 average frames per second on the 9060 XT. And the trend pretty much goes downwards from there in both Quad HD and HD resolution with typically the 5060 Ti coming out on top, 9060 in second, 7700 XT coming in in third place and the standard 5060 coming in at last. Now our last synthetic benchmark is going to be Forza Horizon 5's ultra preset benchmark and at 4k resolution we're actually getting the best and highest score on the 9060 xt at 107 average frames per second a minimum of 93 versus the 5060 ti is getting 101 average frames per second and 96 minimum the same kind of trend goes for quad hd and hd resolution where the 9060 xt is actually beating the 5060 ti which is pretty interesting to see now we're going to move on to our real world gaming benchmark results in the three different resolutions based on some of the popular games that i'm playing right now you can definitely pause the video if you need to look at each result in more detail but we're going to keep things moving and i'm going to give you my final thoughts at the end
る。Too good at this. But really on that guys, that's really. As you saw from those rolls, in most circumstances, the 5060 Ti is the faster card, but not by a significant margin. And there's even circumstances where the 9060 XT is coming out on top based on our experience. Now, from a price perspective, I think currently right now, the 5060 Ti and indeed most new RTX cards are a little bit overpriced in my opinion. And I think the competitive price point of uh, the 9060 XT, which starts at under $400 uh, for uh, this 16 gigabyte version and under $300 for the 8 gigabyte version. So certainly a much more compelling option for the price point. And I would definitely save the money opposed to maybe a one or 2% performance bump. Uh, so for me, I'd probably go with the 9060 XT for the price point, but love to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Check out our description if you want more details about everything we've talked about. And if you go through any of our Amazon affiliate links, helps us make content like this possible. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure you're liked and subscribed, and we'll see you later. Take care.